What's something that's not right about your body, but not serious enough to go to a doctor about? Sometimes I'll have one random hair that grows out of my arm that has the consistency of plastic and is almost clear looking. My mom gets it too. It's just one hair. Edit. Guys it's not Magellan's disease. I used to get that on my face. Every month or so it grew out of my chin cheek area. It stopped appearing after a few years. Which is good cause it would itch. My left leg makes cracking sounds when I walk upstairs. Edit. I'm 20 years old so I must be getting old guys. My ankles make cracking sounds all the time. But I've never figured out why. It can be when walking upstairs or just waking up in the morning and just moving them but never every time I do a certain thing. There's an indent on my right foot where a horse stepped on it. I never went to a doctor about it and I assume it is in fact broken but it's been almost 20 years. There was a guy who was walking home and felt something hit his head. He assumed it was a falling brick. Years later. He hit his head again and got an x-ray. It revealed a bullet lodged in his skull. Stopping just barely short of the brain. The earlier incident must have been a ricochet or a stray shot fired from too far away. The doctors left it as is because adequate scar tissue had already grown around the bullet. I'm 90% certain I have vitiligo but I'm a pale ass slav and I can only notice it on my nether regions because it makes a patch of my pubes blonde. I think this summer I should get a tan to confirm this. Do you have access to a black light or woods lamp? I'm pretty pale but I was noticing blotches on my skin that were paler. I thought I just applied sunscreen unevenly on my hands and cheeks. But eventually I went to a doctor and they shined a black light on the affected areas. The areas without pigment stood out significantly compared to my normal skin. You know that little flap anchoring your tongue to the bottom of your mouth? Mine's abnormally short so I can't stick my tongue out as far as the average person. Technically it was a doctor who told me I had that in the first place. I hadn't ever noticed it on my own and they were trying to examine my throat for unrelated reasons and were getting annoyed that I wouldn't stick my tongue out farther as instructed. They eventually realized it wasn't just non-compliance and diagnosed the issue. Then just kind of put up with a suboptimal throat view. But it's not what I was there for. Plus they said corrective surgery is an option and I've never cared enough to follow up on that. So I'm counting it. The texture of the skin on my right palm changed after I was sick back in March. Sometimes it's bubbly and really itchy. Sometimes it looks just really tight and glossy and sometimes it's so dry that the skin is cracking up. I can definitely see a difference between the right and the left one. The little roads. Fingerprints. On the palm. On my right palm aren't as visible anymore. I have a singular. White eyelash on one of my eyes that grows really quickly and gets so long it'll get in my actual eye. And I need to cut it every couple of months to keep it short. Edit. Continuing on the topic of hair. All over my body I have hair that have multiple hairs growing out of one follicle. These hairs are also super easy and painless to pull out. It's so weird. I experience something that's called exploding head syndrome. Sobering that is much less severe than the name might imply. Basically. Sometimes. Right as I'm on the edge of sleep. I'll hear a loud auditory hallucination that jolts me back awake. Pretty rare though, only happens to me maybe once a month. I used to have a hedgehog named Velcro. I'd let him run around on my bed. One morning I slid out of bed and got a sharp pain in my left ass cheek. I walked to the bathroom and saw that I had a half inch of quill lodged firmly in my haunch. I pulled out what I could and thought I got it all. It wept a few times and eventually healed. It'd been 20 years. And I still have a scab on my ass that falls off once a month. And comes back in a few days. I can feel there's something deep under the skin. But because of the bad angle. There's no way I can take care of it without a dermatologist's help. My collarbone is always sore. To the point that it keeps me up at night. I guess I technically did go to a doctor. I went right after it started hurting and they accused me of drug seeking. That was a year and a half ago. I'll just live with it. I had a similar issue that had been bothering me near my sternum for months. 
my doc recommended magnesium supplements. After about a month of taking them daily I felt normal again. I had an extra set of wisdom teeth that were hidden in behind that weren't picked up by x-rays. The dentist only found them when doing a routine extraction of my normal wisdom teeth. They were like tiny baby teeth that weren't fully developed. The dentist said that he'd never seen that before, he wasn't a young guy either. I have a minor issue in my right knee. A third, bit tiny, nipple under my normal sized dried one, which is slightly higher placed than the one on my left. Asymmetrical abs and a slightly blurry vision in my left eye. Not necessarily wrong. But weird I guess. Skin tags. So many skin tags. I throw up after I eat eggs. I really like eggs though. Vomiting after consuming something is often a sign of an allergy. Check with a doc on this one. I am 24. Yet I feel like a 90 year old. Always tired and groggy and exhausted. I think it's just life. I have Raynaud's disease. It's a rare disorder of the blood vessels. Commonly in fingers and toes but also can happen on ears. Nose or lips. It causes the blood vessels to narrow when you are cold and can happen if you are stressed. When this happens the blood can't get to the surface of the skin and the affected areas turn white and blue and making them numb. Hurts like heck. No cure. Just have to prevent yourself from getting too cold like wear gloves or have the hand warmers with you. I got a concussion early January this year and I still don't feel the same 11 months later. No doctors could do anything about it as it's just post concussion syndrome and it's somewhat common for it to affect people for a year or more after. And X200B. Edit. Thanks everyone for all your concern and your suggestions. I sympathize with your stories. And hope those of you who still have lingering issues feel better soon. For those asking. I feel better than before. Nothing too scary. It was a mild concussion. I'm mostly dealing with mild insomnia. Brain fog. And mood issues and a few other things. On my bad days when symptoms flare up more. I just have to remind myself to take a lot of breaks. I'm a little overweight. And I know how to fix this myself. Same here. If you're having trouble getting started with weight loss. Get into Just Dance, super cheap on mobile, or Ring Fit Adventure. In a month of playing Just Dance 4 days a week. I lost 6 kilograms. I'm only HRNY like once every 5 days. There can be little weeks that go by where I'm just not into it. Don't even watch porn. I sleep well. Exercise 5-6 times a week. I'm not stressed. And I'm a guy in my late 20s. It's literally ruined relationships for me. There's nothing I can do about it. Doctor says my T levels are normal range. Edit. To everyone asking if I'm asexual. I'm interested in women. I enjoy sex. Just not as frequently as is perceived as normal. So no. Not asexual. I have a birth defect in my sternum called pectus excavata maca funnel chest. Look it up. It's interesting. My sternum is not shaped normal. It caves in creating a funnel in my chest. Since I'm female it's not entirely noticeable but it can be felt. And I can hold a puddle of water in it. It does limit the space in my chest cavity so I can feel when something isn't right with my heart more than most and can make my claustrophobia worse. But other than that it doesn't cause many issues. I have looked it up and the procedure to fix it doesn't seem worth it and is usually done for cosmetic reasons so wouldn't be covered by insurance. I sneeze when I eat chocolate. Just twice and that's it. Sometimes it happens sometimes not. I sneeze when I see light. Especially in the mornings. It's apparently insanely common. Like 1 in 3 people. But also the mechanism is not understood and generally so mild people don't realize it. I live in the US. Nothing is serious enough to go to a doctor about. My penis curves to the side like a boomerang. I have a hard time discerning dream from reality since real life is so dreamlike and foggy and dreams are so vivid. Have read its dissociation from depression but never really talked to my psych about it. Depersonalization and dislocation are no joke, definitely talk about it. 
I've struggled for years and am just now learning some coping mechanisms that help. When I was in elementary school I had a pair of blue shoes that I refused to get rid of. So I wore them even though they were a little small. And now my big toes are curved. I have asthma. Yet I can play trumpet in my band better than people older than me. I can just picture a guy having an asthma attack while playing his trumpet and just shoots his asthma pump from the trumpet's bell so he doesn't have to stop playing XD. My chest sometimes hurts like a mini heart attack. But only when I get super baked. I assume my doctor will just tell me to quit getting super baked. Can confirm. That is what they will tell you. If it gets worse. Maybe consider stopping smoking pot. Though. I was fine for years until it started triggering panic attacks just about every time. I have a catch in my throat when I breathe if I don't hit that catch I feel like I haven't gotten enough air. This means I take huge. Deep breaths all the time. And it gets even worse with exercise. Doc says it ain't asthma. And he can't do anything about it so I just gave up on finding an answer. I have a similar issue. But it's intermittent. I've come to the conclusion that it's worse when I'm feeling anxious. Triggers the constant need to yawn as well. I have two uvulas. Every time I see a uvula comment my brain reads it as vulva. I'm a girl if that makes this comment any better. You just can't tell from my username. Actually don't look at my username in relation to this comment. My left ear itches a lot. My big toe sticks up. Out of nowhere. I have to think to push it down. Sometimes have to use other foot. It's from a stroke. I have a birth defect. Roof of my mouth ain't right. Nobody ever caught it until I was 20. I think my sinuses are weird too because covid tests are very bad. I don't really have a speech impediment except sometimes my R is W. The roof of my mouth is higher than normal. Spent my childhood in speech therapy and R's still come out as W's if I'm talking too fast and not thinking about it. If I eat eggs. I become incredibly sick. To the point where my stomach is in agony. I'm on verge of throwing up and I can't move. I simply just stopped eating eggs and haven't had any issues since. But the weird part is I can eat cake and anything with eggs mixed into it. But not eggs by themselves. I've got what's called choroidal nervous air acute which means I have freckling on my eyeball. Found out when I finally went to an optometrist after 5 years. For a new prescription. It doesn't and won't affect my eyesight or anything. It's just a little dot you can see when they do a scan. Edit. So till that you actually should keep tabs on your eye freckles and wear suit glasses because it could become cancerous. I'm super prone to ulcers. If it gets bad enough I get medication but usually I just recognize the symptoms and know it's diet time again. Let me tell you it sucks not having anything spicy or greasy or acidic. Those are my favorite things but my tummy won't have it most of the time. Can't even have raw veggies and I'll loove salad. One side of my body is thinner than the other. When you grab it you can easily notice the difference. I have a similar thing. My waist is pretty indented on only one side of my body. When I was in super awesome shape. It kind of looked like I had feminine curves on that side. Is it weird to talk about my period? They're all f ked up and it's annoying. But I don't feel like it's something I need to bother the doctor about. Edit. So. I have my normal period for about 4 stroke 5 days. And then it stops. But probably 1 2 every other week I some sort of bloody discharge. And constant stomach pains for the last 3 months at least. It makes it really uncomfortable trying to have sx when I never know if I'm randomly going to start bleeding. Also should add. I'm 29 yo. Have two kids. Do not want more but can't do birth control again because I can't handle the side effects. I've had a white section of hair since I was like 13. No clue why. It's just a part of my hair that grows without pigment. The rest is dark brown almost black. Sometimes my vision will go black. I'll start to feel a little weird. It will fade out. But I can not move around and hear perfectly fine. Does it happen just after you sit up or stand up? 
It can be a result of lower than average blood pressure Google orthostatic hypertension. I have it good news is. Low blood pressure is a good thing medically as long as you aren't fainting due to it being super low. Bad news for me is that I have super cold hands and feet due to poor circulation as a result of the low blood pressure. And if I sit up or stand too fast my vision fades out and I have to make sure I'm as hydrated as possible to keep my blood volume up. I have cravings for lemon pledge. Fabric softener sheets. Laundry detergent. Wet sponges. Dirt. And tons of other cleaning products. I don't act on it. So it's whatever. But god sponges sounds good right now. Edit. Misspelled word. I look forward to the first comment that gets a dude go to the doctor now reply. I've had a sinus infection going on 3 years now. Go get ask them to do a swab test. I had recurring ear throat infections for almost 2 years and it turns out I had a super infection, fungal, viral, and bacterial, growing in my throat. It took a month of strong meds. But it hasn't been an issue since. Got a hairline fracture on my shoulder blade years ago that I never treated. From time to time I get a tingly sensation in it. But it's not painful or anything. I have 19 lipomas all over my body. Mostly on my arms. Legs and torso. Most are about the size of a pencil erasers but I have a large one on my arm and one in my thighs that's about the size of a quarter and it's noticeable but the others you can't visually see really. Only feel. I've told numerous doctors who do not seem to care. Apparently it's just aesthetic. I have strabismus. One of my eyes goes sideways if I think or look at something for a while. It's not life threatening but I look like an idiot because of that. I found out when they took my appendix that my uterus is tilted backwards. I thought that's why my periods hurt so much. But the cramps went away when I started birth control. It might not make much difference. But at least we're not planning on having kids so I don't need to worry. Edit. It's really neat to find out so many other people have this. And although it may cause extra pain for some. It doesn't have to mean no kids. Go tilted uterus gang. Oi. Sometimes I suddenly hear the void of nothing in one ear. And then sound slowly readjusts over a couple seconds. And sometimes I notice that my eyes don't see objects as the same colors. Weird but not really a problem so we just carry on. My girlfriend is a doctor so I win by getting to unload all of my minor concerns onto her. My heart just twitched. Am I dying? Double quote. Sometimes when I bend my knee like this. It hurts. Is that normal? Double quote. Would you say my bad memory is still within a normal range? Double quote. I get weird ticks sometimes. I jolt sometimes. But I don't think that it's as serious as Tourette's. The main tick I have is that I blink weird. I try to control it in public but it gets really uncomfortable when I go too long consciously trying to keep it at bay so I just let it do its thing and keep my head down. Sometimes and work school. Someone will catch me doing it and I'll have to come up with some weird excuse like I'm just squinting or I just thought I saw a spider and had to look closer. I don't even know if this is something you'd go to a doctor about even if it was Tourette's but man. I get annoying. My heart beats the wrong way. Didn't even know that it was a thing until it was mentioned during a checkup. It doesn't cause me any ill effects so it's not really a big issue. I had a school buddy get kicked out of the navy because his heart beat differently. The cause? He was too physically fit. His heart had essentially adapted a more efficient beat. I've rolled my ankles so many times that they no longer really swell when it happens anymore. They just roll. I flop over. Then I'll limp for a day and it's business as usual. For me. It's pain. I have fibromyalgia so it's really tough for me to convince a doctor when my pain is different. I've kind of given up unless it gets super debilitating. I think. I may have broken my toes and let them reset on their own as I didn't have insurance. Or time to take off from work. They feel like they have circulation issues now. I mean they don't do much for broken toes anyway. Tape one against the other and tell you to stay off it. My little toe just pops a lot more often than the other. 
I don't have a toenail. About 2 months ago I accidentally dropped my laptop and it landed on my toe. The toe swelled up and it looked like a water balloon that was filled to its fullest capacity. Except it was blood under my nail. A couple days of that then the nail fell off. It started growing back but I did a dumb thing and wore a heel where my toe was squished. Now it's just dried skin and the nail refused to grow. I doubt a doctor would be able to do anything about it. But yeah. My left big toe is popping a lot and has this pain that is more uncomfortable than painful. I did technically speak to a doctor about it since my mother is a doctor though. I've got an atrophied toe that sits on its neighbor and can barely flex or wiggle at all. Doesn't affect my mobility or my balance. It just looks odd when I'm barefoot and makes some shoes more uncomfortable. The first day of my period is living death. I'm usually fine in the early morning but in the later morning. I get extremely nauseated and really bad diarrhea. I'm on the toilet switching from mouth to rear. Too quick to flush the toilet most of the time. I can't swallow food or water bc it's so painful. This is accented by intense lower back pain. Ramming headaches. Extreme dizziness to the point of fainting. And stabbing cramps. The cramps are newer since I never had cramps during my period when I was younger. I've been to the hospital on more than one occasion but the doctors just say I need more electrolytes. I drink electrolyte water before I get my period but it doesn't seem to help. If it happens before work school. I just cancel because it may last a few hours or a day. It's absolutely awful and each time it happens. I just pray that I die instead of enduring this torture. Every time I walk from a warm space to a cold space I gag. Not enough to bring anything up. But enough to stop my walking or talking and attract attention. For instance if I'm in a nice warm living room and go to take my dog out at night where it's cold gag time. Out of the car in the morning to walk into work. Gag time. I've asked my doctor and she has no idea what it could even be so I've just dealt with it. I have a deformed tailbone. I can literally feel two vertebrae side by side horizontally. I have severe pain during certain exercises or when I sit a certain way. I can't imagine trying to get surgery for it. I'm very self conscious about it. Luckily I didn't get a tramp stamp to cover it like I wanted when I was younger. This thread is oddly comforting. I find these little corporeal testimonies so intimate and endearing. Behold. Our humanity. We're weird and beautiful. Shows you what we're missing on TV and Instagram. I think I have something autoimmune going on. I've always had bad seasonal allergies but in recent years they've come with migraines and joint pain that doesn't happen any other time of year. Unless I strain previous injuries from overuse. I've got a weird dent in my skull. I'm missing a ball. My knees always crack when I squat. Weird red spots on my torso. Not zits. Not melanoma. Not freckles. No feeling on the lateral side of my left thumb. A gap in my two front teeth I can fit a medium guitar pick through. I burp all the time. I don't think my epiglottis works right. And my nips are slightly too big. Like toony sized. It's whack as f. But it's my body and I like it. My heart beats up to 205 bpm at times. It comes out of nowhere and it has lasted up to 25 minutes before. Also. Sometimes I get a sharp pain that feels like what I can only describe as a lightning bolt on the left side of my chest. My stomach is very particular about what foods it will accept but it won't tell me which foods and the list changes every day. To be more specific. I'm confirmed lactose intolerant. But sometimes I can down a milkshake no problem. Other times I can eat a sandwich that has a slice of cheese on it and suddenly it's world war I in my digestive system. This also just applies to food in general. I had an addiction to pop tarts for a few weeks and then out of the blue I can't eat one bite without having to immediately, within 10 minutes, take a painful shit. I've since 1. Quit caffeine. 2. Started drinking much more water and 3. Cut back on sugary foods and haven't run into this issue nearly as often. But I'm not about to test my stomach anymore. So I'm still trying to be wary of what I eat. 
My sense of smell is incredibly poor, not Rona related. Predates it by years, and it's either due to whatever makes me sneeze for no goddamn reason. Or a sinus infection. This has been an issue for 5 plus years now. I can also only really breath out of my right nostril. The left is purely aesthetic apparently. I think I may have tinnitus because of a terrible ear infection I got 7 years ago or so. And I can't see well far away. But it's not blurry. Just split images. So it doesn't really bother me much. IDK. I've just gotten used to not being able to breath smell things well. Hear silence. Or see well far away. The nail on my left big toe grows for a bit. Gets infected at its base. Detaches from the nail bed. And then a new one grows behind underneath the old one and pushes it out like a tooth. This has been going on in a cycle for 5 years now after an injury playing floor hockey in high school gym. I actually did see a podiatrist at first but after many many failed treatments he decided that I could have surgery to remove the nail permanently or just let it happen. So here we are. My inner ear used to throb when my neighbor's heat kicked on. It doesn't hurt but by spring I'm going crazy and pissed at people for being cold. For reasons not related to my ear. Their furnace was worked on. It makes weird noises now when it turns on but it no longer causes the ear problem. It's been a problem for about 4 years. I have scrotal webbing on my penis. My scrotum attaches about halfway up my shaft. It's pretty discouraging because it makes my penis appear smaller. But other than that I have no problems. My right knee makes a horrible crackling noise when I go upstairs. I don't really want to know if it's serious, yet. I have alopecia barbie. Which is just a fancy word for straight up bald patches in my beard. There's no cure and I had two holes in the right side of my face but one filled in so I'm down to one. It's okay it just sucks as a single guy trying to get out there and date and it looks like I have a bullet hole in the right side of my face. Over the last year I, 20, developed a persistent pain in my sternum upper ribcage. It feels a lot like when you fall asleep on the couch or folded in on yourself. I constantly feel the need to stretch my arms out behind me and puff my chest up to try to make it go away. Never does though. The center of the pain, on my sternum, is a bit tender to the touch and has been since the pain began. Probably won't ever bring it up to my doctor though. They'll just tell me that it's from being out of shape overweight and not take me seriously. I really need to get my wisdom teeth removed. I think they've grown enough where it's causing me not just pain in general, but also terrible cracking from my jaw. Which is loud and really really hurts. But every time I start to get the courage to get them out, the universe sends me ways that it can go wrong. And I don't trust anyone close to me to not film me while in my doped up state. My skin is really weird. Lot of red bumps on my upper legs and upper arms. With like small rings of dried dead skin around hair follicles on my upper arms. But I've never had any sort of discomfort or any other indication that this issue is anything but cosmetic. My frequent stomach aches. I swear. I get two every week or so despite eating healthy. Not much of a problem but kinda worrisome. My doctor tells me that my diet and digestion is fine but not sure about those miserable stomach aches. My ears have been ringing since July 2017 after a MT. Bike crash. I had a minor concussion. Time moved really strange for the day afterwards. Not sure what a doctor could even do for my ears. Tinnitus isn't very fun. I get canker sores when I'm stressed. Wouldn't be a big issue but I get them on my tongue. So eating. Talking and even breathing makes it hurt. They get bad for a couple of days. Then start to clear up about a week into them. I should note that I have type 1 diabetes. So with my compromised immune system everything takes longer to heal. Me and my family have very very long eyelashes. Fortunately most of ours curl up but there's a few including my nephew whose eyelashes are very long and grow straight out causing a venus flytrap effect. Especially when he swims his eyelashes get tangled into each other like a venus flytrap. It's hilarious but poor thing. We all trim our eyelashes every month or so because they just grow and don't stop. 
I never knew this was weird until I was in high school and my friend's eyelashes were short and didn't grow. I thought everybody's eyelashes grew. My brain makes me spend all my money on my car. One of my toes looks like it's broken since it's slightly bent to the left. But it's not bothering me because I've been born with it. It's not even that noticeable. But one can definitely see it. I have pain around my tailbone area. It's not constant and it's been a part of me for like 6 years now. It makes it hard to sit on a firm chair or sometimes even couch for too long. And the best part is that it feels like I'm being branded if I do lunges or sidesteps. Doesn't hurt when I'm squatting 600 pounds but god forbid I do a body weight lunge. Did actually see a doc when it started but x-ray showed nothing and they said it was probably bruised and to come back if it didn't improve. Decided to just say fck it. My ears have been ringing for so long I didn't know what it people meant when they said their ears were ringing because I thought that's just what silence sounded like. I figured it out in high school but my earliest memory of my ears ringing was after turning the radio off to go to sleep after listening to Casey Kasem's top 40 show as a kid. I always just assumed that's how they were gonna be since it's been so long. I have a great one for this. I have grown a hair in the gums of my teeth. A little hair like you would find on your eyebrows. In. My. Gums. I am a young woman. Under 30, and this has happened 3 times in the past year. I have no clue why. It's super weird. I create a suicide plan daily but never end up doing it. In fact at this point I've just given up on life. And the only hope I genuinely have is to be run over by a bus. Can't see a doctor though because. What's the point? I'll just be drained of my money. Put on mental painkillers to numb any emotion whatsoever and be told to fck off. One of my legs makes a very noticeable clicking noise when I take step. Has been happening since middle school. Doesn't happen all the time though. Absentmindedly biting at my cheeks and inside of my lips. Not enough to bite off skin usually. But if I start focusing on a single spot I'll remove skin and then start removing more to try and make it smooth until it eventually bleeds. I then stop. Sometimes I get mouth sores because of it too. Not a bad thing but it's neat. My beard has every hair coloring in it. Brown. Red. Black. Blonde it's all there in different parts. Brown. Cheeks. Red. Chin and goatee region. Blonde. Under lips and also most of the mustache. Black. Bottom of the chin neck. My spine is very very not straight. You look at me straight on and one of my shoulders is a good 3 inches higher than the other. I also tend to lean my head to one side because that's just how my spine goes. I had to get a chest x-ray for work the other day. And the doctor tried to get me to straighten up lol. He gave up. When he showed my my x-ray I was like damn I'm hella wonky. I also literally always have a runny nose. How does it feel to breathe you bastards? I have an insanely itchy ear and have had it for years. It's like constantly wet inside and itches like crazy. But at the same time. It's dry and flakes skin. I've been to the doctor for it twice. And the most I got out of it was to dry my ear with a hair dryer when I get out of the shower. That did nothing. I had ear drops the second time that got rid of it for about a month. I can't be bothered to pay my $25 copay for a stupid ear that constantly itches. There's just nothing they can do about it. I wake up with my heart pounding sometimes. Get fluttery feelings in my chest every now and then. My arms and legs will also get that pinched nerve feeling very easily when I lay down. Even flat on my back. Oh well. I am in no position to go through the expensive high deductible I have to get it checked out. Hell just getting ultrasounds was too much for my budget. Learned my lesson with that. Plus I think my wrist is dislocated or something ever since I got in a motorcycle crash but I had no insurance at the time and now except I'll just always be in pain bc of it. Kota Luo of living in America. Colon. Oral allergen syndrome. I can't eat raw apples and carrots because it makes my mouth and throat really itchy. I I it's a manifestation of pollen allergy. Although I don't think I'm that allergic to pollen. 
Nothing can be done about it. I wear sunglasses all the time. My eyes are sensitive to light. Air. Makeup and probably politically incorrect jokes at this point. I even have a dark pair for when the sun is really out and a less dark pair for when it isn't. I can't bring myself to care what people think about that anymore. But I had a beating at my daughter's school and apparently my eyes were swollen and red and it looked like I was baked. So that's... Less fun. Dark. Dry patches started appearing on my back sometime around August. No idea what triggered it and moisturizing doesn't help. Later on. It appeared around my hips and shoulders but other than being itchy and not pretty to look at. It doesn't really bother me. I just assume it's my eczema. My eye has been twitching for about 3 weeks. A little dizzy too but other than those things nothing. Not sure if it's something or if it's just being glued to screens all day night now that I'm working from home and it's winter outside. I should do this on a throwaway. But the luxuries of posting on threads that are several hours old. I guess. I fart too much. Not a little too much. Not even a lot too much. Like. I can't laugh without farting. I can't cough without farting. I can't even f king burp without farting. Which is a special experience. Hiccups are a stinky little hell. Gave up going to the doctor long ago. They have no idea why I have so much gas. They're just glad it's moving. Oh. And I farted just now while typing this up. Dot. Dash.